Well, we all know by now that Hulk Hogan is famous for his tall tales and his bending and exaggeration of the truth, which is an understatement at times. And this has never been more on display, in my opinion, than in this interview that he did with Theo Vaughn this week, the great Theo Vaughn, a comedian, stand-up comedian, has a video podcast show on YouTube and podcast apps by the name of This Past Weekend. He's had Ric Flair on in the past. Uh, He is absolutely a wrestling fan, as a matter of fact. Uh, If you doubt me on that, check out this clip of Theo talking about his love for pro wrestling, and specifically Hulk Hogan. We were, like, when you would come on, it was like, Man, it didn't matter how poor we were. It didn't matter if my parents were too busy. It didn't matter if I wasn't a tough kid. It was like, yeah, the, I, I fell in love with you. It was like, I didn't care about the wrestling, you know? Like I did. The wrestling yeah. was cool, but I cared about whoever that, per- like whoever they made me, f- whatever they yeah. made me feel, yeah. you know? And when you, it was like, it made me feel like, man, this is an escape. Like, and, yeah. and I fell more in love with the, yeah, the person, not the moves. Like it didn't yeah. matter who's the most athletic. Right, right. You know, Snooker was fun to watch because he had, you know, this hair coming off him, yeah. and you know, and these, uh, you know, domestic charges or whatever, just dangling off of him. But yeah. he was like, but I, otherwise, it was like, yeah, it was about the person. It wasn't about as much the wrestling. So clearly, Theo Vaughn, huge wrestling fan, knows his shit. He's sitting there just marking out to Hulk Hogan the whole time. And Hulk seemed a little grouchy. I don't know if he just didn't get Theo's sense of humor. Theo's kind of a unique cat, you know? He's got a... He's, he's an oddball. His his comedy is so dry that, you know, you, you look at him like... Is this guy fucking with me? Is this a bit? Or is this just, is, is he just like this? You know, um, but I watch his show quite a bit. So it was fun to see the Hulkster pop up. And I did what I always go to do when I watch these videos with wrestlers and stuff. Is I'm looking for the story, right? And I did pluck a story that we'll cover here in a later segment. Uh, about the whole Marvel trademark situation. We'll dive into that. Uh, But that's what I go looking for when I listen to these podcasts, something I can cover for the show. But it just kept jumping out to me the whole time that this guy is just fucking lying. Every fucking story that this guy is telling is a damned lie. He's lying through his teeth or exaggerating, fucking bending the truth. Tall tales. And look, I don't even hate Hulk Hogan for this at this point. It's kind of endearing. It's part of his legend. Right? Wrestling's a work anyway. What do we expect a guy from the old school to fucking go out there and just keep it 100% honest with people? No, he's out there entertaining still. He's telling stories. It's the new kayfabe, as Sam Roberts likes to talk about a lot. And maybe that's it. But Hulk Hogan has become infamous for his many lies. For example, everybody's heard about the Andre the Giant one, right? Where he's he's told it a million times. Where he doesn't he goes into WrestleMania 3 and has no idea if he's going to go over that night or not. He's going in the champion by the way. Andre on his very last legs can barely fucking move, has to stay by the ropes the whole time to get through the match. And Hulk Hogan goes out there and he doesn't know if he's going to go over in the main event or not. And fucking he's leaving it up to Andre who hates his guts and told him to shut up and listen. We've all heard that story a million times. And that was not even one of the, I have eight. I have eight examples. And I know that's five fingers, but you get the point. Doesn't matter. We're not here to count fingers. Audio listeners never even noticed, so fuck off. But I have eight different examples of Hulk Hogan bullshitting Theo Vaughn. And look, I would normally let this slide, but so many people are going to listen to this that are not wrestling fans, right? There's a lot of Theo Vaughn fans that will go, oh, I've heard of Hulk Hogan. Let me, you know, everybody knows he's a household name. So let me see what this guy's all about. You know, it's one of those interviews where you don't need to be a wrestling fan to want to get to know this personality. Same with Ric Flair when he was on. So let me set the record straight on some 
questionable content. What I'm going to do, uh, a little bit of a unique approach compared to my normal clip show format that I do here. We're just going to go through one by one here, and I'm going to play uh, an example, eight examples, in fact, of Hulk Hogan telling lies, and we're going to debunk. We're going to decide, is he just bending the truth a little bit? Because some of these he is, or maybe it's an honest mistake. And look, we'll take a fair approach in these. I'll play the devil's advocate a little bit. But at the end of the day, I am here to convince the jury that Hulk Hogan is a liar. A goddamn dirty liar. And let's start out with our first example, Exhibit A. Like when I was doing the New York Madison Square Garden thing, he held the Southern Belt thing down, which was actually a little harder. Because he was going an hour every night. Sometimes they do like what they call it Broadways where nobody wins. Mm -hmm. You do like two hour Broadways with Harley Race. If I, somebody told me to go an hour Broadway, I said, just beat me. Yeah. I'm out of here. I'm going to get room service and a beer. You know? Yeah. Yeah, you remember all the two hour Broadways that Harley Race and Ric Flair had, right? Remember when they used to go two hours? That was just a flub up, though, perhaps. I mean, Hulk did go on to say immediately after it, you know, if you booked me in a one-hour Broadway, I would just say, pin me, brother. I'm getting out of here. Which is also complete and total bullshit. Like, Hulk Hogan's just going to let fucking, uh, I don't know, fucking King Kong Bundy or fucking Earthquake pin him in the middle of the ring, one, two, three, in the main event title match so that he doesn't have to go an hour Broadway. Get real. But I'll give this one to Hulk as a plausible, just a slip up, right? You know, I would venture to say he's never once in his life watched a Ric Flair Harley Race match, at least not a full hour long in which they have had one hour Broadways. But uh, I'm pretty positive that there's no two hour Broadways. But I digress. A slip of the tongue, right? Plausibly. Let's go ahead and move on to Exhibit Number two, Exhibit B. Exhibit B. Yeah, he said he's back. Yeah, he said he did 30 days sober and then walked across the street to a bar and turned in his chip. Yeah. For a that's drink. Right. The so, funny part is. He can, he just can, he's, that's who he is. Yeah, he's though. the man. The funny part is when he was, had that really serious health issue. Yeah. Um, I got a call from Wendy and it didn't look good. So I flew up, we got a plane right away, flew up to Atlanta. And uh, I walked in, the doctor pulled me aside. He goes, hey, your buddy here <laughs> has destroyed his body, the inside of some of his intestines and stuff were dying and stuff. He goes, he's got a 5% chance of making it through the surgery. So he goes in. We wait. We, uh, Jimmy Hart was with me. We waited, we waited, we waited. He comes out. He's still alive. Um, his girl's crying. His daughter Ashley's crying. I'm sitting there holding his hand, holding his hand. 5% chance to make it. He opens his eyes. He looks up at me. He goes, Hogan, get me a six pack. I went, what? First thing he said to me, get me a six pack when he woke up. You know? Yeah, I'm not shocked, man. I don't know. So look, that first one with Hulk, plausible deniability, right? But as he's talking about Ric Flair, he tells this heartwarming baby face of a story where his Good buddy Ric Flair, and by all accounts, you know, Rick said he gets along with Hulk just fine. So, by all accounts, they are friends of some kind. But his good buddy Hulk was called by Flair's wife, or, you know, pseudo wife or whatever she is at this point. <clears throat> Wendy called Hulk, and Hulk came to his bedside. We had like a 5% chance to live. The doctor pulls Hulk aside, shares all of Ric Flair's medical information with Hulk. Hey, Hulk, your buddy has about a 5% chance of living. His intestines are all fucked up. All of this is mishmashed and so on and so forth. Just letting you know, Hulkster, Hulkamania, and that I ate my vitamins and said my prayers as a kid, brother. And then, while Hulk, while Hulk, after his conversation with this doctor, this very intimate, revealing moment where the doctor shared this information with Flair's good buddy, good buddy Hulk, Hulk Hogan is down on the bedside of Ric Flair, 
holding his hand. Ashley's there, right, he says. Charlotte Flair. Wendy's there. They're both crying. Hulk's holding Ric Flair's hand, but the, his wife and his daughter are crying, not holding his hand, right? And they're just crying in the background, but Hulk's holding Flair's hand, and Flair pops to life. His eyes come open. He's back to life. God damn it. He's there. Woo! He's in it. Back to life. And his first words are, Hulk, get me a six-pack. Come on. Really? And poor Theo Vaughn doesn't know enough, right? He's just sitting there going, wow, dude, I believe it. Because he met Ric Flair, and Ric Flair's a crazy old drunk bastard, right? So the nature boy, woo! So that's like the story, but it's a tall tale. It's the tall tales that Hogan tells. Hogan, Flair, okay, look, I wasn't there when Flair sprung back to life, right? When his eyes popped back open, when he was on death's door, to be able to verify or deny if Hulk Hogan was there at his bedside holding his hand at the very moment that Flair came back to life. I don't know. Who's to say, right? Who's to say that Hulk was the guy that got the first words and not Ashley and not Wendy, not David, not fucking anybody else. Just, just, uh, you know, whoever the other daughter is, I forgot her name, Megan Conrad's wife. Right. And then Conrad himself, it was Hulk Hogan who got the first words and it was Flair asking for beer. Let's also never mind that Flair said that he had complete amnesia. Did not remember anything. He didn't even remember his own kids for a couple weeks, I think. I don't know the exact timeline, but it was at least, you know, uh, it was a significant amount of time, a couple weeks, a month, a couple months before Flair got hit. And that's from Flair's own mouth himself. No, I was not able to go out and locate that clip, but it's out there and I'm sure you've heard it before or could find it or will hear it again. Flair talking about being, you know, when he came back from his fucking coma or whatever he was in, he didn't remember anything. He didn't even remember who his kids were. He didn't remember being the 16th time. Nature boy. None of that fucking. But he knew Hulk Hogan's name. And had, and, and brother, get me a six pack. Woo. It's fucking. It's insane. It's a fucking, it's an outright bullshit lie. And it would be adorable if, if, if it wasn't so like preposterous, you know what I mean? But I digress. There's more folks. There's more. We're just getting started. Exhibit C. Because you can Google Hulk Hogan in Japan. You can see me get down and wrestle like Bret Hart and all the guys. Cause that's how I started, you know? Back in the day here, mm-hmm. the guy I'm here on that suit broke my leg the first day, ran me off, put me in the dojo for two years, learned wrestling, took submissions. Yeah, he wrestled like Bret Hart and all those guys when he was in Japan. Just like Bret Hart. Bret Hart, the excellence of execution. The great, one of the greatest of all time. You don't have to say it, but every wrestler will tell you that. Stone Cold Steve Austin will tell you that. CM Punk will tell you that. FTR will tell you that. Shawn Michaels himself will tell you Brett's fucking great. It's a goddamn hitman. Just like him over in Japan. Now, I'll give this one a little bit of leeway too as, uh, as a little bit more of a tall tale than an outright bullshit lie like our last one here. As look... You know, Hulk could be, you know, using Brett as a comparison to say I was a technical wrestler in which, yes, there's evidence out there of Hulk Hogan. You can find it. Uh, I don't know if I'll slice it in here or not, but it's certainly out there of Hulk Hogan doing fucking catch his catch can fucking do si do fucking drop toe hold fucking technical shit. He certainly does not have the grace and execution of a Bret Hart, so to say, to use Bret as a comparison, knowing that Bret is regarded 
widely as one of, if not the greatest professional wrestlers of all time, is sort of a stretch. <clears throat> and to say it to a guy like Theo Vaughn just goes, oh, yeah, yeah, you were that good of a wrestler? Wow. Like, he's just, so many people are going to listen to that and just go, oh, Hulk can wrestle. He just doesn't because it's WWF and it's all about the character, brother, which was the, the picture that Hulk tried to paint. And there's some truth to that, no doubt. But uh, a little bit of an exaggeration at the same time. But let's continue walking down the path of lies of Hulkamania that Hulkamania uh, had in this interview with Theo Vaughn on this past weekend. In this clip here, Exhibit D. In 77 is a bad guy because I sold out Shea Stadium with Andre in 78. Mm Mm-hmm. And then I went all around Japan. I spent 20 years in Japan, six months out of the year in no Japan. No way. That's what I'm saying. Google some of my matches. In People Japan, don't know Japan. about that as much. No, not really. 20 years. 20 years Hulk Hogan spent in Japan. Six months out of the year, he says. He spent in Japan. This was Hulk Hogan who, at the beginning of the clip, was talking about how he started in 77. Okay, so Hogan started in 77, 20 years would bring him to 1997. So you remember all through Hulkamania in the 80s when Hulk Hogan would go over to Japan for half the year. Now he would go over to Japan for shots and that sort of thing, but half the year. And you remember all the Hollywood Hogan. You remember Hollywood Hogan going over to work in Japan, right? Half the year he did. It's, it's, it's an outright lie, probably, but we'll give it an exaggeration, a tall tale. Because Hulk had probably, over the course of 20 years, gone back and forth to Japan for shots couple tours here and there, perhaps. Bunch of one-offs. He was not spending six months of the year for 20 years in Japan. He would be an all-time fucking legend over there. It's, It's ridiculous on its face. But the people listening to the Theo Vaughn show, don't, they don't know what the fuck Japan, they're, they're not going to be able to fact check that. Oh, Hogan, I guess he was you know, a really great fucking legendary wrestler, technical wizard wrestler, tough guy over in Japan for 20 years that nobody even knows about. Weird. A, B, C, D, E. Where are we at? E. Let's check out Exhibit E. I was going to wrestle him. All you go tells me who's going to win or lose. I don't mean I need to talk about anything. I never talked about a match. Really? Except one time with The Rock, and we didn't do anything we talked about. I could go out there with Randy Orton, not say a word. Matter of fact, when I wrestled in the SummerSlam, we didn't even talk. You know, Vince told us who he wanted to win or lose, and we went out and did it. Randy Orton's old school. Old yeah. Way. I could do that with Cena. You know, I, I'd have to talk, listen. I mean, he have to. I have to lead the match, but I could do it with Cena because he's good enough. Yeah. Um, rock all day long. Stone Cold all day long. These guys are really good in the ring, bro. Yeah. Flair all day long. Me and Flair never talked. He never once talked about a match ever in his entire life except for that one time with The Rock at WrestleMania, and they threw it all out the window anyway. Perhaps, I don't know, I wasn't in the locker room, I wasn't in the fucking booking meeting, I didn't put the match together with those guys, you know what I mean? Now, certainly I know Hulk's not back there going, okay, so here's we're going to lock up, and then I'm going to down, and then you're up, and then... Bada bing, bada boom, bing bang, pop, boop, pop, fucking drop him on the what's call it and give him the old spin him around here. Boom, boom, boom. Bump down. Come back, heat. Get it again. Whatever the fuck. You know what I mean? I'm sure Hulk's not back there doing that. But you can't tell me he's never once ever. It's just always, oh, here's the finish and and have a good day. Here's who wins. No. Look at all the fucking angles that he was in. You can't tell me that his shit with Andre wasn't well put together because Andre couldn't fucking move. 
They knew that everything they did had to stay towards the ropes. Maybe that was instinctual. We'll give them that. But all that Saturday night's main event shit was fucking wasn't choreographed or scripted or or pre-planned necessarily. But, you know, when they're running angles like that with the Million Dollar Man and the, the Hebner referees and, you know, fucking Dick Ebersaw getting involved and stuff. That was as tightly produced as possible. The stuff with the Macho Man. What about the infamous story with Sting? You know, they came backstage to talk about the fucking match, right? Sting. What else was Sting there to talk about with Bischoff and Hogan? So, look, man. uh, Another tall tale because I think the point he's trying to get over besides make himself sound cool compared to today's wrestlers. <clears throat> is that he didn't need to sit and script through every single detailed thing. But you know he fucking did. Plus, he worked with Diamond Dallas Page. And you goddamn know DDP always did it. Macho Man always scripted his shit. You can't tell me that Hulk never had a fucking scripted through match. Working with uh, uh, Jay Leno and, and Carl Malone. Like, of course those matches were pre-put together. Those guys can't go out there and fucking just wing it. Uh, I would be shocked, uh, highly shocked if they did. Rodman, same thing. They're planning all these these spots at the very least, you know. And that's hello, that's going through your match. You don't need to go. I do this, then you do this, then I do this, then you do this, then I do this, then I do this, then I do this, 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 then you do this, then I cut you off. You don't got to do that. You got your spots. All right, we'll get in there. We'll, we'll tussle around a little bit, and then I'm gonna, be, you know, we'll get you into the corner, and the, you know, the referee is gonna get you, know, and I'll cheap shot you. And you do that, you know. There's gonna be those, especially with the celebrities. So I call bullshit on this, but we'll lean towards tall tale uh, because I get the overall point that he wasn't completely scripted. Um, but also that whole, you know, oh, you know, back in my day, brother, we didn't, we just, you know, I never did it, did it, did Eh, you're just trying to sound cool. Speaking of, you know, he's, he's name dropping some current guys and so forth. Cena, I could do it with. I'd just have to, I'd have to carry him through it, of course. I'd have, <laughs> I'd have to tie, I'd have to call the whole thing and walk him through it, but I, I could get through it with Cena. Has Hulk ever had a match with Cena? Has he ever worked with Cena in any capacity at all? I don't believe... I, I I have to think their paths have crossed at least in like an in ring segment or promo, but they ever do like a cross tag team gimmick or anything like that. I can't imagine, you know, Hulk to just say, oh, you know, Cena could do it, but I'd have to walk. I mean, the the nerve of that fucking dick face. Then to you know, he casually slipped in there. All these guys, you know, Stone Cold Steve Austin all day long. How many times do you you remember all those matches that Hulk Hogan had with Stone Cold? I think there was like one tag team match that was had where they might have been in the ring together for like a second or something. He doesn't, it, <clears throat> it just lies. He's just, he's a tall, ta- he just, whatever sounds cool in the interview that gets him over, that's what he's, that's what he's doing. That's his shtick. That's what Hulk does. But there's so many of them and so many more. What are we on? Exhibit F. Check out Exhibit F. We came back to the studio and everybody was screwing around. One guy was getting married and one guy's girlfriend was having a baby. And so we get, we can leave in two weeks and go on the road with these guys and mother's finest. I don't know if you know who they are. Mm-hmm. That song CM Punk comes out to mm-hmm. cult of personality, that band mother's oh, finest yeah. cult out of Atlanta. We were going to go with them at Blackfoot. We were going to open for them. I said, bro, this is our chance because our shit's straight right now. Two of the guys didn't want to leave. Fuck. And I was so pissed off. So let me tell you guys something. I'm done. I've been doing this for 10 years. I've been doing this for 10 years with a couple of you guys. And I'm done. I'm quitting. And I'm going to go be the greatest wrestler that ever lived. And all five of these guys <laughs> fell on the ground laughing. <laughs> yeah, you know that band Mother's Finest that does CM Punk's entrance music, Cult of Personality? I almost went on tour with them in Blackfoot, but all my bandmates were busy having kids and girlfriends and fucking around, and we lost our opportunity, and I was going to be a major rock star until that happened. So then I said, I'm going to go be the best wrestler in the world, and they all laughed at me. Let's let's unpack that one, shall we? Um, 
First of all, the song Cult of Personality does not come from Mother Whatever the Fuck. That is not the name of that band. It is by the name of Living Color is the band who sings Cult of Personality. I don't know if Hulk knows that or not. He will give it to him as maybe just being old and confused. Uh, But it also sounds like he wants to bring in a little, hey, you know that cool song, Uh, cool CM Punk guy? Yeah, I almost went on, on tour with those guys. You know. Could be a lot of that too, and if at all, you know, he was he was the one guy willing, ready to go, gonna go be a rock star on his big break tour, and all of his bandmates were a bunch of lazy bitches. (sighs) Again, I wasn't there. Can't call him an outright liar here, but this sure sounds like some Hulk Hogan propaganda if I've ever heard it. Sounds like some self-aggrandizing bullshit. If I've ever heard it. Now, he was in a band, and by all accounts, he's a decent little fucking rock guitar player guy. Bass or guitar or whatever the fuck. I don't know. Something with a string and a fucking... That's what he's doing. Or maybe... That's that's the bass. That's the difference. Um... (laughs) Ding, 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 ding. Maybe a banjo. I don't know what the fuck he was doing with his life before them, but by all accounts, he was good at it. So maybe there's there's got to be some truth to that, possibly somewhere in it. These kind of stories happen, but it just sounds like another, you know, hey man. And then the, this just to get the, th- hey, you know, see the guys that did CM Punk's entrance music. I mean, you're so like, where do you where where do these things come from in your brain, Hulk Hogan? But we're not done yet. We have one more exhibit. Uh, two more. That was exhibit uh, exhibit G. We got exhibit G. We got one more here. E F G. Check out this clip. And they tried to get me to testify otherwise. Wow. You know, which I said I would. And then when I got on the witness stand, I told the truth and made a quick exit and didn't go back to New York for five years. Really? Oh, yeah. Because that's where the feds were? Because that's where Vince yeah, was? They were, they were trying to prosecute him out of Brooklyn. Wow. So when I went to work for Ted Turner, I couldn't even wrestle anywhere in New York for five years. So they thought you were going to rat on him? Yeah. And you just said he didn't do it? Well, I became a government witness. Wow. Because to avoid prosecution, you know, because they were, they were going to get somebody and they were going for Vince. And then if they weren't going for events, they pulled me aside and actually told me what was going to happen to me if I didn't say this. And I went, I didn't know it. that. No problem. No problem, brother. You got it. So when I got on the uh, witness stand there in Brooklyn, um, I had a Learjet waiting at Tito Tito Airport. Airport. I had Alec Isaacman, one of my attorneys that handled Larry Flint, the Larry Flint trial. Mm-hmm. I had another attorney, Henry Holmes, with me. And when I got off that witness stand, I didn't even go sit in the court. I went out the side yeah. door, got in the car, went to Teterboro Airport, and didn't come back for five years until the three three prosecutors, uh, Charlie Rose, or either Charlie Rose or Sean O'Shea, one of them got busted with a bunch of kilos of coke, mm. and then the other one died of cancer. I can't remember who was who. But the third guy, the head of the FBI, flagged him and I became good friends. Oh, really? Yeah. So <laughs> once that was over, then I went back to New York. Yeah. You know. Look, I know what you're saying. Seth, you're playing the whole goddamn interview. Well, that's what he did. He lied through the whole goddamn interview. Uh, you remember Hulk Hogan hiding from the feds? On the run from the feds, he swerved the feds. He swerved the federal government. They came to Hulk Hogan and said, Hulk Hogan, we're going to get you for steroids, brother. And you're going to go down unless you testify against Vince McMahon and help us take down him. And Hulk said, okay, guys, whatever you want, I'll do it. I'll do whatever you say. Just don't, just don't. Don't don't lock me up, okay? I'll help. I'll do whatever you want. Wink, wink. Fingers crossed behind his back. Double, double. Because when he got on the witness stand, he swerved him. He agreed to be a special witness for the federal government against Vince McMahon, only to go, 
No, nah, man, Vincent didn't do shit. He's totally innocent. Peace out, bro, and duck out the back door and run and leave and hide from the state for five years till the statute of limitations was up or the detectives were dead or moved on to some other shit and he became buddies with them or died. Really? Hulk Hogan on the run from the federal government? Because he was going to be the target of their steroid fucking takedown? Unless he buried Vince McMahon and at the last minute he fucking told the truth about Vince McMahon's innocence and then stayed out of the state. Never mind that this was the federal government, not the state government. And staying out of the state of New York, he said, oh, they prosecuted New York or whatever. Vince was being prosecuted by the federal government. The court might have, you know, the trial might have taken place in New York, but it's not like the feds will, it's federal. As long as you're within the United, you'd have to move to Guam or fucking Canada or something. And you're the, the American here, you're Mr. America. You can't just do that shit. So again, another fucking tall tale by the immortal Hulk Hogan here who just fucking took the stand and, and, and you know, Probably lied about some shit, if we're being honest here. But that's not for me to say. But he certainly did not swerve and run from the federal government. And and I think he added in there, SYW, I never went there with WCW. Fuck off. Fuck off. But we're not done yet. I know what you're saying. This is on too long. There's so many lies. How could this be? I've saved what I believe to be the best and most shocking one for last. Maybe you've heard it. I would say running from the feds is a pretty big one. But alas, Exhibit H for Hulk Hogan is a fucking liar. And that makes eight goddamn examples of lies in this one interview with Theo Vaughn. Check out this clip. I mean, wrestling is really what hit me first. Um it was probably my most favorite sport until I started watching UFC. Yeah, um, yeah. Which I really love. You know, UFC is awesome. Do you ever watch any of that? Yeah, yeah. There was there was an opportunity to buy it a long time ago, and Vince and I passed on it. You know, it was, it was uh, before the referees stopped things. Yeah, and they were kicking people when they were on the ground, and it, it just was so violent when it was brought to us. We went, and uh, that was a huge mistake. Yeah. <laughs> We had an opportunity to buy the UFC. Me and Vince did, but we passed on it. Oh, that was stupid. See how Hulk does this stuff? He also, he's he's so fucking manipulative. He really is. Because he says it like self-deprecating. Like, boy, I was a fucking idiot to pass up on that one, you know? Like, put to humble himself and make himself, you know, sound whatever. But then you dive in a little bit deeper. Like, why would you even say that? Let's look into this. Because where he's getting this from is that Vince McMahon had an opportunity to buy the UFC. In fact, I believe it's well known that Shane McMahon brought that opportunity to Vince and tried to sell him on it. When did he try to sell him on it? Well, let's take a look here. Let's fucking go over the uh, UFC here. We're over on encyclopedia.com. And let's just walk through this, okay, and, and try to analyze when Hulk Hogan and Vince McMahon. Now, a little bit of background here uh, before I get to this is that uh, Hulk Hogan, there is some truth that Hulk Hogan and Vince McMahon were very much like partners, in the early 80s, the early era of Hulkamania, the early one, WrestleMania 1, WrestleMania 2, WrestleMania 3, probably up to, through WrestleMania 4. Hulk took time off, I think, to film No Holds Barred. All through that time, uh, probably up to 5, I would imagine. All you know, Hulk and Vince were very tight. They worked together on everything. They wrote the script to, to No Holds Barred together. They were, uh, you know... Planned, did a lot for WrestleMania. Like, that's been documented. Um, and, you know, some of that might even be tall tales to some extent. But it's well known that they were pretty tight 
pretty buddy buddy. They were in the WWF together in a lot of ways, but WWF outgrew Hulk Hogan. It became bigger than Hulkamania. And, uh, you know, there was a time where it couldn't have existed without Hulkamania, but it grew out of that. So, uh, with that background, Hulk is going off the basis that him and Vince have always been business partners, apparently, because the UFC was not founded till about 1992, and I believe did not have its first event till 1993. And then they ended up, I'm pulling it up over here. They ended up, so they're founded in 92, 93 was first event here. They get their ban called for in 96 and then sold to Zufa in 2001. So let's go back. 1992, 1993 was Hulk Hogan and Vince McMahon. Awesome business partners, best buddy business partners back in 1992, 93. Several people responsible for the birth of UFC in 1992, including blah, 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 kickboxers, blah, blah, blah. So, look, man, uh, that was around the time of 1992, 93 was WrestleMania 8, WrestleMania 9, right? Hulk Hogan was not buddy-buddy with Vince McMahon at that time. Hulk Hogan was on his way out. He was doing more movies. I think wanting to get into doing the TV shows or did do the TV shows. <clears throat> he was more part-time at that time. That's why if you go back and you watch WrestleMania 8, it was promo- he had had a little sit-down interview with Vince McMahon uh, leading into that match, and he was asked, is this your last match with the WWF? And Hulk did take time off, and he made his return, and he won the tag belts with Bruce Beefcake at Mania 9 and won the WWF title and was back out by the King of the Ring, and that was it. He was done. He was out of WWF. So for him and Vince to be business partners looking to buy the UFC, the UFC wasn't even for sale at the time when they were fucking business partners. Hulk was already out of the WWF by the time UFC was even getting off the ground. And he was over in WCW working with the NWO, Eric Bischoff, all of that shit, right? Fast forward to the next time the UFC was for sale. They come up for sale in 2001. It was when Zufa ends up buying UFC. Zufa was the previous owner before Endeavor here. So for the Fertitta brothers, they put Dana White in charge. They're the company that made the UFC what it is today. They made it a sport. When they bought it, you know, as Hulk said in the clip, it was human cockfighting. It was referred to that. You know, there's even some new in 96 here. They were uh, there was a ban called for it. You know, it was buried. It was damn near nothing. Uh, lobbying to ban it. It was banned in almost every state in 1997 or it was lobbied to be banned in every state in 97. Um, that's when it probably would have been at its weakest and lowest price. And it was that time period between 97, 96, up to 2001, where it was, I mean, the, the Fertitas bought it for $2 million, it says here. $2 million. Remember what it sold for? Like fucking billion, right? Like $4 billion. <laughs> they turned it into a four, and now it's merged with the WWE. It's like a $9 billion company. My fucking God with Endeavor, right? So that's a huge turnaround. So it was Shane McMahon. It was rumored Shane McMahon was the one that was, uh, you know, bugging Vince to, hey, we should buy this UFC thing. That would have been pre-2001. Where was Hulk Hogan in, in 2001? <clears throat> Well, in 2000, he was still in participating in the death of WCW under Vince Russo, wrestling Billy Kidman, finger poke of doom. Or no, that was a little bit later. Is this thing with Jeff Jarrett where Jarrett was uh, laid down in the ring for him or whatever, and Hogan walked off. Hulk didn't come back to the WWE till 2002 with that NWO gimmick. 
can inject it with a lethal dose of poison. The N W O. God damn it. 2002? Hulk was sitting home on the couch eating fucking Cheetos puffs, collecting a big old fat paycheck from Turner, AOL Time Warner. Because his contract was with them, not WCW. Same as a lot of the other people that did not come over to the desk. That's why the invasion angle sucked. Because it was all the fucking mid-card and lower-card guys. And all the top stars had deals with the network, not with the fucking WCW itself. So they were riding out their contracts. Because WWE was not going to pay them the money they were making to sit home on the couch. Especially a Hulk Hogan. There's no way he was going to make the money in WWE. He had to wait till his deal was up. So, again, not business partners at any point in time ever that the UFC was up for sale. Was Hulk Hogan a business partner with Vince McMahon or in any position to buy UFC? It's a complete fabricated bullshit lie. And, folks, I'm exhausted. I don't know about you, but we have gone through... The- <laughs> It took longer than I thought it would. Look, man, I I sat and I listened to this interview looking for a decent clip. And every single fucking thing coming out of his mouth was a tall tale or an outright lie. And I had to fucking say my piece about it. Share it with you guys. Let the people know. So here we are. But uh, what are your thoughts? There's not much more to say about it again. Look, I think it's part of Hulk Hogan's charm in a lot of ways. He's always working. You could absolutely consider it to be just Hulk working, right? It's just a part of Hulk fucking, it's just the pro wrestling business. The new kayfabe telling tall tale stories now instead of telling tall tale fights in the ring, right? Instead of telling fake fights, we're telling fake stories. Who knows? Who knows where Hulk's coming from? Maybe his ego is that big or maybe he's just a fucking idiot. Who knows? I don't know. Who am I to say? But I am just here as your humble podcast journalist pointing out the evidence for you to decide for yourself. Let me know down in the comments below. Is this just, oh, Hulk Hogan just telling his fibber stories? Or is he just a lying piece of shit or something in between? I want to know your thoughts or challenge me if you think that uh, I unfairly accused on any of my exhibits, my many exhibits of lies of Hulk Hogan. Let me know. I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next. Let me tell you something, brother. You can check out full episodes each and every Sunday right here on this channel dude don't forget to like don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to take your vitamins and say your prayers brother